the song said, praise him in advance. Amen. Just look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, do you know how God get ready to bless me? Say, neighbor, if you do, how God will get ready to bless me, you might shout too. society assume that they could historically break the spirit and break the faith of black people. And much to their shock, every time they thought that it could break us, we started fighting back. They assumed falsely that the middle passage would break us, but we fought back. They assumed slavery would break us, but we fought back. They assumed Jim Crow would break us, but we fought back. They assumed segregation would break us, but we fought back. They assumed that the Klan would break us, but we fought back. They assumed that the Tuskegee experiment would break us, but we fought back. They assumed that planting crack cocaine in our communities would break us, but we fought back. They assumed that allowing Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity to talk would break us, but we fought back. They assumed that putting Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court would break us, but we fought back. So why in the world did they assume that George Zimmerman a misguided Hispanic with a Jewish name would have the authority to break somebody who has the will to live. Oh Ladies and gentlemen, the enemy has done a terrible misservice to himself because he didn't realize how much fight was in you. Oh and if in fact you were just an average person and did not have any drive, any zeal or any resilience, you might would have waved the white flag. You would have probably surrendered and you would have probably rolled over and played dead a long time ago. But there is something about the spirit of persistence and expectation that runs in your veins that helps you to understand no matter how life tries to beat me down, I'm still going to get up and fight back. I can't find help to go. It is said, ladies and gentlemen, that in 1994, when the L.A. Police Department pulled over Rodney King, and they began to beat him with a nightstick, they hit this man 56 times in 36 seconds. 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 And the question was asked of the LA Police Department, why did you keep beating him? And they said, y'all don't even know this stuff exists. They said this, we would have stopped if he had stayed down. God help me. Here. But the problem is, he kept getting back up again. And every time he kept getting back up, we start hitting him. And aren't you glad and aren't you a testimony and a living witness that America got mad because they wanted you to stay down, but you kept getting back up again. They assumed that you didn't have what it takes, but you kept getting back up again. They kept profiling you and wouldn't even give you a small business loan, but you kept getting back up again. They told you that you were three-fifths of a human being, but you kept getting back up again. They assumed that you would only be the butler and the maid, but you kept getting back up again. They assumed that you didn't have the intellect and the ability to learn and comprehend. 
in, but you kept getting back up again. And you looked the enemy in the face and said, when you get me down, you better kill me. Because if you don't kill me, I'm going to keep getting back up again. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Elbow your neighbor and say, I keep fighting back. Tell them like you mean, say, I keep fighting back. No way in the world am I going to roll over. No way in the world am I going to surrender. My people have fought too hard and marched too far and cried too long and bled too much for me to sit up in here and act like I can't handle inconvenience and I can't handle no discomfort. I got to get up and fight back. George Zimmerman said, he seen it. George Zimmerman said, when he saw that young black man walking away, can y'all believe this? He said, I'm tired of them always getting away. That's what he said. He said, I told myself, I'm tired of them always getting away. And they don't understand, ladies and gentlemen, that's the way that most of us black people feel. Well, We're tired of them always getting away. Y'all miss you. White collar criminals who think that they're above the law. They will in fact break the law, do inside trading, run Ponzi schemes. And then they go off to a country club that they call prison. But then they'll go to the corner and pick up black boys off the street corner who don't even have $2 to their name. And they'll have a press conference about it. They always get away. There are corrupt politicians who want to, in fact, do away with our voting act. Y'all don't even do it. And act as if we should not have access to health care. They always get away. Oh, God, help me in here. Uh, those doctors who injected syphilis into black men so that we could not recreate, they always get away. To have a government who would rather see the entire nation bankrupt than to support a black president, they always get away. But aren't you glad, I said, aren't you glad that the enemy thought that he had me, but I I got away. And you ought to be thanking God right now that there was so much stuff that has tried to wipe you out. But God gave you an emergency exit. High five the neighbor and say, I got away. Oh, glory be to God. Slap him upside the head and say, I got away. I got away. I got away. I got away. And I need just 30 of y'all to just shout it out loud. Trayvon Martin was a thug because of what he had on. But they never considered where he got his fashion sense from. I I'm preaching this message because the nation needs to hear me speak. Because we're getting ready to commemorate the wall on Washington. But we don't even know in today's time. Most of them, we know we're talking about. Thank you. Y'all miss you. But they assume that Trayvon Martin was a thug based off of what he had on. But they never considered where young black people got their fashion sense from. This gonna get the rough. They never really evaluated this. And nobody in today's time wants to talk about it. That maybe, just maybe, young black people wear hoods because they are mimicking the original game. Y'all miss me. Who wore hoods and burned crosses in our yard. Whoa. 
wore hoods and torched our churches, wore hoods and raped our women, wore hoods and emasculated our men. Maybe they're wearing hoods because they saw other people get away. Y'all miss you. And people assume who you are without having any understanding of what you've come through. God, help me here. Having no understanding of the obstacles that you've had to overcome. Can I say it like I feel it? Please don't think you know me based off of what you heard about me. God, help me preach this one. Oh, God. Help me your neighbor say, I can preach right there. Don't you dare look me up and down and assume because I'm not dressed like you. You assume that I don't have a relationship with God. But can I tell you, I'm close enough to God to know that God doesn't care if I have on true religion genes. If I don't have true religion in my heart. It's only black folk who call it in water. is because you don't even know yourself how they used to be in the street. God help me here. I can't hear nobody in here. If you had any idea what God delivered and rescued them from, you'd be scared to sit by me in church. Oh God. And right now, if you only knew, you might need some security. But thanks be unto God that two people are watching my back. Who is it, Pastor? Goodness and mercy. Assumptions, ladies and gentlemen, when you operate out of assumptions, nine out of ten times, you're going to be made a fool. I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. But, but I want to get this into your spirit. Don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions. Can I tell you, most times people assume things. They assume that you are just like them. Right. Y'all, this is what I just said. Put that in your notes. Most times people make assumptions. They assume that you are like them. So when they act up and act ugly, they assume that you won't shake their hand. They assume that you got an attitude. But ladies and gentlemen, whether y'all know it or not, we're living in the last days. And I'm going to tell y'all this, and we're going to be done. No matter what folk do, what they say, you don't have time to deal with nobody's mess. Don't have time. Y'all know what? I went to another funeral this past week. Seem like I'm going to two or three funerals a week, trying to be supportive with people that are losing their loved ones. And every time I walk into the building, Thank you, Jesus. I remind myself Thank you, Jesus. it could be me. And I know many people don't like to talk about that. Sometimes you need to be reminded it could be me. You know why? Because the enemy messes with us. We are making the assumption that you're going to live forever. But one of these old days, it won't be very long. You're going to look for me, and I'll be gone. But here's my prayer. Lord, I just want to go to heaven. preach every week. And, and no matter what you think about my preaching, it means nothing. It means nothing. 
if you're not saved, if you're not sanctified, and you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, I feel something here. We need to go back to crying out loud. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Y'all don't know about it. I got saved calling on the name of Jesus. I got delivered calling on the name of Jesus. I got set free calling on the name of Jesus. And what is happening is people are coming to church and you're putting on the front and you're putting on the act. And you assume that you're tricking God. But you forgot that God knows all that he sees all. He even knows your heart. He you knows that some of y'all don't even want to be here today. And you wonder why you can't get delivered. But I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we assume there's somebody putting on the show for you. But there are many people in this very room, some standing, some sitting, they can testify to you that my praise is a weapon. That my praise is what's got me here today. Because I don't even know how I'm paying these people. I don't even know how I still got my car. Praying 